guess their age. Okay. Guess if they're natural or not. And then um, say what you think they have done. Okay. Okay, so the first girl is Jess. Uh, She's 38, lips, nose. Yeah, so obviously she had some work done, in my opinion. This is Harriet. 42, yes. Cheeks, lips, nose, fake lashes, brows. Okay, perfect. Botox. And then this is Nicole. Are those two different photos of the same person? Yes, they're so, one of us. No, this or is Nicole. Yes, yeah, they're the same person, but two different photos. This is like her on Instagram versus oh. her like, <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna look at a real photo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, she's, uh, this one's, she's 35, lips, veneers, Botox, maybe a little cheek filler. Is Samantha. Mm, 32, lips, veneers, nose, cheeks. Do you want to do ages just for fun? Yeah. Okay, so Samantha is 26. Oh God. Nicole is 24. Oh my god. Harriet is 24. Oh my god. And then Jess is 25. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously I don't watch this show. Maybe I should, but this is crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, plastic, plastic surgery and injectables done incorrectly can make you look older. So, um, boy, I was really off. If you have a beating heart and you live under this blue sky <laughs> and you have access to a, a telephone, like a smartphone or any phone for that matter, or magazines for that matter, you would know that these beauty standards are going, getting out of control, just out of control. And as a woman who has a daughter, I feel like it's my personal responsibility to love myself or at least just try. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm on this new journey with my natural hair. I gave up wearing wigs, I threw them all out. I don't wear makeup as much either. I'm letting my skin breathe. Um, I don't do my like lashes like I used to. I don't even do my nails the way I used to. I'm at a place where I'm learning how to normalize just the way I was born, which is crazy to even say that or even have to like try to figure that out that's weird but i'm just trying to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in my own skin until i'm at a point where i'm actually comfortable in my skin and it's gotten better over time this journey has been a couple of months and you know i need to say that i don't want to pass judgment on women i know that there's a lot of external pressures but for me personally as a woman as well and as a mother as well i have realized that it's actually not that hard to start loving yourself. Um, we put up a lot of mental barriers and I was doing that myself, putting up mental barriers and making excuses as to why I couldn't like my natural hair or as to why I couldn't like my nose or as to why I couldn't like my skin complexion enough or the way my boobs look or the way my body looks in general. It was easy to make excuses and when it was time to start loving myself, uh, it got uncomfortable um, but now that I'm on the other side for the most part of loving myself it's so liberating and I want this for more girls I want this for more women and I really do pray that we can get to a point where we don't all feel like we need to look the same we don't all need to have filler in our face or hair extensions or lash extensions or nail extensions like we could just you know and, and it's not to say that that's not a way to you know enjoy and adorn yourself and to have fun with your femininity that's great but to feel like you have to do these things that's where the problem starts or that you're over reliant and constantly doing it and you don't even let your natural you breathe like your natural nails don't breathe you're constantly getting refills your natural eyelashes don't breathe you're constantly getting refills your wigs don't breathe you're constantly getting refills like how about refill yourself on the word of god and I know that there's some of you who watch me who are not religious, but I'm telling you, like, there is something about God. There is power in the name of Jesus. Like, there's just so much power in loving God. Because once you start to love God and realize how much he loves you just as you are, the way he made you, the easier it is to start to love yourself. But what I've noticed um, in general about the beauty standards is they're so unattainable because they're not even real. <laughs> These people will come on there with a filter on talking about my skin is clear. Come on there with a BBL talking about this is my real booty. Come on there with a with a breast lift and talk about this is my... And, you know, I think for me what was heartbreaking um, 
and it's not even like that deep or that heartbreaking and it's just it's disappointing there's this woman that i follow and, her, and she is a peloton instructor i identify with her i read her book from cover to cover within a day like less than 24 hours because she has a similar story to me both of her parents are from ondo state in nigeria she lost her dad, her mom, and her brother. And if you've been watching me, you know I've lost those three family members as well in a short amount of time. And I really love, I just love the way she carries herself. I love her confidence. I love the way she inspires me to be my best self. And I was, you know, on the bike recently and I saw that she got a breast lift. And it just broke my heart because it's like, dang. I loved looking at her imperfect boobs. I was like, oh my God, this, this woman is giving me so much confidence because she's just being herself. But the pressure got to her too. And I don't think anyone is absolved from feeling the pressure. I don't think anyone is safe from their external pressures. And that to me is the devil. That to me is demonic. And it's a system that has been created to keep women insecure, keep women on this woman on this hamster wheel where they're always trying to like achieve the next trend or trying to achieve the next like beauty standard that is literally being made up. All of it is made up. And a lot of us need to sit and realize you're gonna die one day. I don't feel like we think about our mortality enough. Maybe y'all have been sheltered. Maybe there's a point in your life where you're like, okay, whatever, whatever is whatever. I lost a lot, so F it if I get a breast, breast implant or F it if my breast implant explodes and causes crazy amounts of pain because it's a foreign object in my body, F it. Maybe that's the angle you take, but my angle is F it. If this world, if I'm gonna lose it all anyway, if I'm gonna die one day, I want to at least experience what it feels like to fully love myself in all my imperfect glory. There's, I don't, you know, I don't think that there's one that's better than the other, but I do want to stand on this, you know, in front of this camera and preach my perspective and preach my angle and the way I approach life because I don't got to pay for my approach. I don't got to go under the, the knife for my approach. I don't gotta have to risk my life for the approach that I'm taking on life, which is to be radical, to be fully accepting myself, to be so bold, to not have to conform to the pattern of this world or conform to beauty standards that have been created in a lab or created in the demonic pits of hell just so that people can stay insecure and spend their money all willy-nilly and stay in the rat race and stay unhappy because in reality what god has put on your heart that 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 thing that god puts in you that gives you so much joy that you want to do but you feel held back because you're not good enough your boobs are flat chest you're flat chested you don't have enough boob you don't have enough booty you don't have enough this is like you keep thinking that you're not enough that's not how god sees you if you start to lean into what god actually says about you those fears will literally literally dis disappear and not to say that they'll disappear forever because you're still flesh and blood and you're human, but just keep returning back to God. Jesus says it himself. He is living water. He'll always be pouring out to you. He'll always pour out. It never ends living water. It's an overflow. But so many of us, I don't think, even have a, comp like a, a religious bone in our body or we don't even want to be thinking about spirituality because this world has brainwashed us that spirituality means you're stupid or spirituality is not in fashion and are not in vogue or whatever but to be quite honest with you the minute I let go of controlling what y'all see about me like I don't want to control whether you think I'm pretty if you think I'm pretty you think I'm pretty um, I, I let go of that the minute I started letting go of that level of control I was able to find peace is my life hunky-dory and a, 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 a skip in the park and is it all rainbows and gumdrops absolutely not but my teeth are real my lips are real my nose is real my boobs are real my butt is real everything and it's not to say that i'm better than you but i'm not paying for anything that is not real i don't want it anymore the wigs goodbye i don't follow celebrities online anymore i don't want, i don't care like these celebrities don't matter to me and i don't matter to them and me deleting celebrities off of my page i don't have the fear of missing out anymore i'm not missing out i don't even have a second thought about it I don't care. What is it really doing to add to my life? And that goes back to the mentality of my mortality. Like the fact that I'm going to die any month, any week, any year, I, don't, I have no clue, right? The fact that I hold that thought in my brain allows me to be detached to celebrities. Be detached to your standards of beauty. Be detached to feeling like I'm missing out. What am I missing out on? Who freaking?
freaking cares? I have a daughter and a husband that love me that I have to love and that I need to pour into. I have a world that I need to pour into and I need to be my authentic self. And if nobody else can be my, my authentic self, that's weird. There's only one me. There's only one girl who has this body type, who has this face shape, this lip shape. And me standing in my truth and me standing in who I am 100% unaltered is going to be a blessing onto someone. You know, I think about this one person I follow. I don't really know him like that, but she's a mom and she has like a med spa and she has a daughter and all that. And I just be thinking like, you be posting pictures of lip filler and lip injections and <sighs> Lord have mercy. It's tough that that's what makes us feel good. And I know there's a lot of people who are kind of like, oh, do what, do, do what makes you feel good. But I'm at a place where I don't care if you're gonna hate me for saying this, because I will still love you, because I love people unconditionally. But you don't need a filler to be beautiful. And I don't take that as like the okie doke of like, okay, you're feeling insecure, go ahead and get a filler and feel better about yourself because that's not going to sustain. You're going to have to go get refills. You're going to have to go do all this other stuff. And it's not that um, I'm trying to control you. It's just that that's not something that'll keep you satisfied for long. And I'm trying to help you figure out how to really get satisfied by really accepting who you are. And it takes a strong mind. It takes a willingness to get there. And not for nothing, a lot of us are just like on group think. A lot of us are just in a freaking, I don't even know, in an echo chamber. We're all just saying the same things, believing the same things, too afraid to stand out and be ourselves, too afraid to go against the grain and think for ourselves as big adults. That was me a few months ago. So I, I empathize, because a few months ago I couldn't think for myself. A few months ago I was in competition with people online, like, look at me, I'm going on all these trips, look at me, I'm so cute, look at me, I got the new outfit, look at me, I, no, nobody's looking at me, nobody cares. The minute you start to lose the people that you love, you start to realize like the people who care will care because they'll show up for you and everyone else is just there, like far, far removed from your actual struggles, your day to day life. <sighs> Lord have mercy. I just I'm disappointed that there's this pressure on women in particular and the pressure is very much man made. No, literally, it's man made and it's our, it's artificial pressure it's not real but a lot of us don't have the time we don't want we don't want to take the time to take a step back and examine our lives and really think if none of this mattered if there was no beauty standards would i even care <laughs> well pretend that there are no beauty I, I literally pretend that there's no beauty standards and i just like allow myself to be beautiful for who i'm meant to be beautiful for if somebody finds me beautiful then that was meant to be that is what God intended. I'm not going to control anyone to find me attractive. If you don't find, I don't care. <laughs> and I wish I had this energy for a very long time. And I know a lot of us don't get to this place. And I had to be like literally broken. God broke me with all this like trauma in my life. There's so many things that have happened that like had to break me to realize like, yo, my mom was literally alive on December 18th. I spoke to her and then she died the next day. <sighs> <sighs> 